How to make an LED blink on your Xilinx FPGA development board? My name is Grady, I'm with Simply Embedded, and today I'm going to show you how you can do that. So let's get started. Alright everyone, so let's get straight into the tutorial. And we'll be creating a blinking LED today using a clock divider. So the first thing you want to do is you want to create this project, create a top module and add a constraints file. I'll be using Real Digital's Blackboard for this tutorial, but you can use any development board you want to use as long as it's Xilinx based and it works with Vivado Design Suite software. The only thing that might be different is the project setup and constraints file. Everything else should be the same. All right, open up the top module. Let's get this one ready. Let's get going here. So for the top module, you will have an input for clock signal. So you can say it input wire actually. And you will also have an output wire for LED. So that's all you're going to have for this design. So the input signal clock is really fast right now. It's at 100 megahertz. We want to use a clock divider to divide down the clock signal, which means that we will slow down actually the clock signal. At 100 megahertz, the clock is doing 100 million cycles in one second. If we would use the clock as an output for the LED, the LED would be blinking so fast, you wouldn't see the blinks, you would just see one continuous color because it's going so fast. We want to create a separate module clock divider just to keep our design modular. Otherwise, if all the information is together in one file, everything becomes clustered. So it's also good coding practice to keep your design modular so that if someone else would need to access your code or read it, they would understand it quick in a quicker manner and be able to access those parts of the design that they need and do it efficiently. So they wouldn't need to scroll through your code and try to find where did you put this clock divider and so on. Just to, just to keep everything simple, let's keep them separate in modules. All right, so let's create this module for a clock divider. So go to add sources, add or create, create a file and name it clock divider. All right, finish. All right, so open up the clock divider module. Let's start designing this. So the clock divider that we're doing is a counter based, which means that we'll be using a counter to slow down the clock signal. So in this case, we'll have a input clock again, and this will be the 100 megahertz clock that's coming into the system. And we will have one output, which will be output divided clock and uh, let's say our goal for this one is to have it at one hertz. One hertz would mean 0 0.5 seconds on and 0 0.5 seconds off. So in order to create a counter, we need to have a bus of registers. And we will use an integer, which I talked about in the Vivada simulator tutorial as well. Create an integer and name it counter value and initialize it at zero. So in order to assign values to registers, we need to create an always block. The syntax for this is as follows. Always add and the parentheses stand for sensitivity list, which means that always add whatever is inside the parentheses. Whenever that happens, the always block will trigger. In the other time, it won't trigger. Nothing will happen. Only at that instance, something will happen. So in this case, we'll have always add pause edge clock. The positive edge also means rising edge. So any time when the clock is going from zero to one, something happens at the always block. And then the always block will be triggered only at that instant. So always block will have begin and end. And then we're gonna have an if statement that says that whenever the counter value is equal to 1000, we will do something. So in this case, we'll say that counter value is equal to zero. We can say that this means that reset value or reset the counter value. Else, any other situation, the counter value will equal to counter value plus one. So now we'll be counting until 1000 and then reset the value and start again. Keep counting to the 1000 and reset the value and so on. So notice how I had a less than an equal sign together here and that one only had an equal sign. 
So there's a small difference between those two. I'll be making a video in a couple of weeks that's all about Verilog basics and I'll explain a little bit more about this there. But, but the basic idea is that if you have two lines like this, that means that both of these lines happen in parallel. These two things happen at the same time. Although if you just have an equal sign, that means that these two actions will happen in a sequence. That means that this will happen first, counter value equals to zero, and then counter value equals to five. So now we can go ahead and divide the clock. For this, we will create another always block, and we will say always add, positive edge of a clock, exactly as before. And we will have begin, end. We will have exactly the same line here. If the counter value equals to thousand, you will do something. Essentially, you can combine these two always blocks together, but for this tutorial, I'm just keeping them separate just to show where's the counter and where's the clock divider. So when the counter value is to 1000, we can say that the divided clock is equal to not divided clock. Essentially, we will flip the signal. Essentially, we're delaying this divided clock signal for 1000 input clock signal cycles. In order for the counter to count to 1000, the input clock is doing 1000 clock cycles, which means that the divided clock will flip around every time there's been 1000 clock cycles. Although this is not exactly 1000 because we start counting from zero. So we count into zero as well. So zero to 1000 is actually 1001 clock cycles because we go 0, 1, 2, 3. We don't start counting from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on. So that's why it's 1001. So now we're getting this red line here. And this is simply because the output signal, so the input is wired here, but the output needs to be a register. So remember how I said that anything inside the always block, if you want to reassign a value to it or assign a value to it, it needs to be a register. In order for the divided clock to work, the divided clock has to be a register. So we can initialize it as zero. Any other situation here, we can say that else divided clock is equal to divided clock. So store the value, which means that every time we hit the thousand, we flip the signal. But any other case, we keep the divided clock signal the same. We don't flip it around, we just keep it the same. Before we move on, you can see that there's 1,000 here and 1,000 here. Since we can see that the 1,000 is repeating itself, we can define it as local parameter. And we can say that this is division value. Div value equals to 1,000. And we can use this here and here as well. So we can use the division value and say whatever it might be. In this case, we, we're not sure if it's one hertz. So we can say if it's actually one hertz, not sure. But we can test it out by creating a simulation file. Let's add sources and create a simulation source. Next, create a file and let's name it test bench. Test bench, there we go. Since we'll be simulating the clock divider, copy these. Let's go to test bench, right? So any input will turn into register. So we have red clock equals to zero and a semicolon at the end. And any output will turn into a wire. And wires can't have values assigned to them. So we'll remove that. And oh, and test bench won't have any inputs, right? So we're gonna remove the parentheses and just put a semicolon there. So now we're simulating the clock divider module. So let's name it clock divider UUT, unit under test. Make the connections here. So we have clock, sorry, dot clock, clock, comma, dot, and then divide the clock divide clock, and that's it. And this will be our wrapper. There we go. So in order to create this 100 megahertz clock signal, we will use always statements. So the syntax for this goes as follows. So always, 
hashtag 5, which creates the 5 nanosecond delay. And we can say that clock is equal to not clock. This translates to that every 5 nanoseconds, the signal flips around. And this equals to 10 nanosecond period, which makes 100 megahertz. There we go. So we have our signal for the clock, and now we can simulate it. We have the wrapper and everything. So go ahead and run simulation, run behavior simulation, save all of these files, of course, and run it. Another thing that I wanted to mention is if your test bench isn't automatically the top module here and under the simulation sources, you want to make sure it is the top module. Otherwise, you'll be simulating a wrong file. The way you can do this is you can right click on it and you can set as top here. So if it's not the top module already, make sure it is the top module every time you simulate. Otherwise, you are simulating a different module that's on the top there. Under simulation, you can go to unit under test, click on it, and under objects, you can drag in these objects. You can change the values of those um, to unsigned decimals. So you can go ahead and do that. You wanna run this simulation for like one microsecond or something like that. And we can see some, let's reset it. Let's relaunch it just to be sure. Well, let's try it for one millisecond. One microsecond seems like a very short amount of time. When we analyze this simulation, we can see that the counter value reaches 1000 here. When you click on the counter value here, you can use the keyboard arrows to navigate with the counter values. You can click on the left with arrows and you can see that the counter value goes to 1000. Then you go click on the right again and you can see that the divided clock value flipped around. You can go back and forth like that. So we can see that as soon as the counter value reached 1000, the divided clock value flipped around, which is correct. And the same happens here. So click on the counter value, and then divided clock is 1, counter value reached to 1000. The counter value reached to 1000, divided clock value is 1, and the next clock cycle, the divided clock value flipped around, and the counter value went to 0. And this repeats over and over again for each of these cycles. From the simulation, we can see that we're still not running slow enough. In this case, we want to slow down even more. So based on the simulation, we can say that this is not 1 hertz. We need to increase the division value to actually create a 1 hertz pulse. But how much do we need to increase? Not sure. Although there is a formula that we can use to actually calculate the division value. We want 1 hertz, so the division value will be 100 mega megahertz divided by two times desired frequency minus one. So the two comes from that we need to count until 1000 twice. We need to do it two times. Oh, and this should be division value here as well. So we need to reach this value two times. The minus one comes from that we start counting from zero. So if we count from zero to 1000, we're actually counting 1001 times. If we want a specific frequency, we need to count exactly that number of times. So if we want to count exactly 1,000 times, we should be counting minus one. So we should subtract one from there to get the exact number. Using this equation, we need to count up to 49,999,999. So a lot of nines, 999999. So this is the value we need to reach to get one hertz signal. All right. So relaunch the simulation. We can run the simulation for this amount of time, which is going to be oh, a while. I'll just fast forward this whole simulation stuff. All right, so now that the simulation has finished, we can see that we are pretty much at 0 0.5 seconds and one seconds right there. Go to our top module, finish our design by actually creating a wrapper for the clock divider. And you can go ahead and I'll just copy this one to divide a clock from here since that's a little bit harder to write. So our module is clock divider and I'll just name it wrapper. And we're gonna have our signals here, the clock signal. So the clock signal goes to the clock signal. So the 100 megahertz. And then the 
and a divided clock goes to the LED. And that's it. I open the sources and you want to make sure that your constraints are good as well. So uh, uncomment the clock. You want to have one LED for the blinking LED. Uh, make sure you have all of that. Generate the bitstream and test it out on your board. Thank you so much guys for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new to this YouTube channel, consider subscribing and make sure you ring the bell to get notifications for future video uploads. Other than that, keep up the good work and I'll see you next time.